Hello and welcome to my demo of the newfangled mill wizards. Uh, this program is being released concurrent with the new version of Mach 4, although it isn't exactly integrated into Mach 4 as wizards have previously been done. This is a standalone program that uh, could run with Mach, but could also run on any PC uh, currently running Windows, but future versions will be released for Linux and Mac. I'd like to show you the basic uh, operation of the wizard in this fairly short vis video. We won't go into great deal on anything. The wizard is very heavily job oriented and this panel on the left of the screen has the information about the job. This window will be filled with a list of operations as the job is built up. Um, we have editing capabilities to be able to edit, delete, move up, move down, and copy those items into other items on the list. We also have the ability to save a job file. Uh, we could begin a new job here. We could load an existing job file, or we could save the job file. Uh, for this demo, I'll actually start a new job by clicking the New Job button here. The middle of our screen contains a G-code window. Uh, as the, product, as the uh, job is completed, more and more lines will appear in this G-code window. On this panel are the basic operations that we can use to compose our job. Surfacing, rectangle, circle, a common milling operations. There are the common pocketing operations, uh, some drilling cycles, and we have some pretty extensive control in drilling now, even including milling circles in the um, drill arrangements, and a couple of fourth axis options. I won't be demonstrating all of these in this video. I want to just show you how the basic idea works of, of building a, a job. So we click the New Job button, and a new job setup window will appear. Our first field is where we select the file name for the job. We can either enter a file name by simply typing it here, or we can use the Browse button that would bring up the common Windows uh, dialog for opening a file. So it's a very common Windows function. Next, we have a material box. Um, and there are several materials to choose from. The materials actually come from a material table. Um, we've populated it with some simple values. You can edit that table with one of the options in the config screen and add any materials that you commonly use. The information in the material table will help us in the tool screen to calculate the proper speed and feed for this particular material. Next we have a line for custom code. If your machine requires some kind of custom startup code, maybe something to initialize a tool change or whatever, uh, you can simply type that line in here. One thing to know about our wizards is that every time you use a wizard, the values that you entered on your last use of that wizard will be populated in the screen to start with. So if you fill in this custom code line, it'll come back on every new job command you do in the future until you change it. Uh, next on our job, we need to specify the units of measure, either English units or metric units. Um, the, the program is fully capable of both units, but only one unit uh, applies throughout a particular job. Uh, our next uh, item is called the Z-Step Strategy. In each m milling operation, we ask you for a total depth of cut and a step for each cut. Um, if you happen to enter a step value that is exactly an integer number of cuts, then there's no problem. But if you don't enter an exact integer multiple, there's a bit of a dilemma. What do we do to, to decide how to cut? We have two strategies we can use. The equal strategy says for us to calculate a depth of cut less than the cut you depth you have entered, but the largest depth that will get the job cut in an equal number of steps. The other one, as entered, will say use the step depth exactly as it's been given, 
uh, meaning that the last cut will probably be some small value. That might make sense if you wanted to enter a value that would come out with a finish cut for your last cut. Our G code can have a lot of comments in it to indicate where the various components begin and the parameters that were selected. If you don't want to see all of those comments, you can tick this box off. Um, that might be the case if you're working on a machine uh, like one of the older Venix that had very small program memory. You might not want to use it up with comments. Uh, the next job parameter is a rapid height. This rapid height will apply throughout the job and it's a height at which we are safe to make any X, Y move. Every operation will always end by sending the tool back up to the rapid height and every operation will begin by an X, Y move to the appropriate starting point. We also have included a clearance height. The clearance height is how far the tool should retract away from the work before making a rapid move or at what height the tool should stop its rapid downward feed and switch to a feed rate move um, as the tool finally approaches the work. And this will be very handy if you have a high rapid and then want to want to come down at a high speed but then slow down as the tool contacts the work for beginning to cut. Um, you will notice that every screen has a help button and we have a completely integrated help system that is the standard Windows type of help screen uh, with the indexes, um, everything you would expect to see in a Windows help system that's fully integrated uh, with the package. Okay, new job, I'll click OK. We immediately are taken to a tool setting because every job must begin with a new tool. Um, we have a tool number. Right now the number is only used in the T command. We hope someday to add a tool table to the program. You specify a tool diameter, a number of flutes, and the type or material of the tool. These three values together will allow us to calculate a surface feed chip load, an RPM, and a feed rate, and a plunge rate. Now, those will calculate automatically. Anytime you change a number here, those numbers will update, but you can also go in and override them. If you uh, have an idea of a number that you want to use, you can simply click and enter that number. The program will then stop recalculating and use the numbers that you've entered. The final thing we have to define for the tool is how we want it to ramp down into work in the Z motion. Uh, and we specify a ramp angle. 90 degree is a plunge, so if you want to plunge your tool straight down into the work, simply enter 90 here. But if you want it to ramp in at a shallower angle, enter the angle you'd like here in degrees and the program will calculate a ramp tool path along the line of cut, um, usually in a zigzag fashion. If it can't make it in one pass, the tool will zig back and forth along the first line of operation until it gets down to the right depth and then take off cutting. So I'll click OK. We're now ready. Our job table shows that we have a job setting and a tool change, and we're ready to select one or more uh, operations to become part of our job. Um, for this demo, let's, let's do simply one operation. I'm going to do a circular pocket. Um, this is the typical screen for any operation. On this side, we see a diagram showing what the operation is going to look like. We usually see this uh, dotted blue arrow that indicates the way the cutting tool is going. And right now you notice I've asked for counterclockwise. If I ask for clockwise, this will dynamically update to show us what we're doing. It also generally shows an origin point so that we know, in this case, we've asked for a X center to be at minus five, Y center two. That means the origin is somewhere down in this direction for those values we've specified. Our Z side generally looks like this, a diagram to remind you of what the uh, various parameters mean. 
top of material you can always specify the top usually it's zero but you can specify anything it needs to be here's your total depth of cut here's your step depth and a percent step over for uh, the step over the tool in making a pocket this side will be typical of almost any of the milling operations I say OK and we will see a tool path um, and I can do the uh, as in Mach 3 by clicking a mouse I can look at uh, rotate the tool path around or look at it straight on well we could continue to add operations but for this video I want to end it at this uh, I do want to show you that if I right click on this job I could edit it which would pop back the same screen we had just seen and I might make a change for instance I noticed that I was making that cut in only one step so let's make it let's change the step depth and make two passes and now you see that our uh, screen is two uh, by right clicking over here I could also delete that operation I could copy it um, if I were going to do a similar operation for example if I wanted to now take a finish cut and make that pocket slightly larger for a finish I could say copy and a second copy of the same operation appears I can now click edit come in here and here's where I can edit the uh, finish pass operation so now I've got two operations laid on top of each other um, I can also do an enable or disable I could disable one of these operations if I didn't want it to be active in this particular job well as we're building up the g-code we can always click this button and get a display of the g-code that we have developed so far note the comments in the g-code um, and we can click the button finally that says do you want to save the g-code we say yes it's saved to our file and our application our job has been built well that's the basic thing I wanted to show here the way that we can manipulate our various operations we could now save this job file we could reload it again later um, so we've got great flexibility now in managing the job in a later video we'll go through some of these operations and talk about some of the specific operations but that's what I wanted to show for now uh, thank you and I hope you've uh, enjoyed watching this video